Drug-fueled night leads to British priest's death. A British priest, Father Andrew Wagstaff, 69, tragically died after a drug-fueled night of gay sex with another Anglican priest, Father Bernard, 60, who has since been arrested. The incident occurred in Antwerp, Belgium, where the two reportedly used ecstasy and poppers together. After Wagstaff fell ill and lost consciousness, Father Bernard called emergency services. Despite efforts to revive Wagstaff, he was pronounced dead shortly after midnight. Authorities found two ecstasy pills at the scene. Bernard has been charged with drug trafficking, resulting in death, although the autopsy hasn't confirmed the exact cause. A bishop will decide whether Bernard can retain his church position. Wagstaff had recently retired from his role as chaplain of St. Boniface Church in Antwerp while Bernard was visiting Belgium during Pope Francis's trip. This incident follows another scandal in April where a Polish Catholic priest was sentenced to 18 months in prison after a male sex worker overdosed during a gay adult play party. You know, this, this really bothers me because almost every news outlet is covering this as a sex and drug story. When you Google this, these fathers' names, it's the exact same kind of scandalous verbiage about it. Nowhere except here are we talking about his life, his contributions, how he was forced to live a secret life uh, by the church. He really stood up for the church's values in protecting some of its youngest congregants. He raised um, a whole lot of money to expand the church during COVID, something that was absolutely unheard of. He connected disabled people with counseling and getting them the services that they needed. Uh, so, I, you know, I'm, I'm not really shocked by somebody in their 60s or 70s living kind of a life of repression and, mm -hmm. and kind of just trying to find any way to feel something out there. So my heart just goes out to you know, him and the people who loved uh, his message. And you know, hopefully this really kind of drives home the point of why being out, it really is important. Mm. It sometimes is a life and death thing because it determines the decisions and the risks that you're willing to make based mm. on the value that you see within yourself. Mm -hmm. mm. I love the way you put that. Um, Right before you spoke, I wrote down coping, mental health, and spirituality, and repression. And um, so this story really speaks to the toll that it takes when you repress parts of yourself. Um, and no matter how good you do, no matter what good you put out into the world, um, you know, it, 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 it takes a toll. It takes a toll when you're not your full authentic self. And sometimes we have to cope in different ways. Yeah. And one of the darkest parts about um, our community um, is the toxic drug use and the yeah. ways in which we seek pleasure and the ways in which we um, we cope with things through sex and other avenues. And it shows that it's not just the young ones in the club. It's just not just, it, it shows that it is, it is vast. It is, um, it is spread across the board. It is from different backgrounds. No matter who you are, these things can affect you within our community. And I think we really need to start speaking openly about um, about these things. We really need to normalize these conversations. Um, in our community here in South Florida, someone who was very um, known, very valuable, um, transitioned, I like to use the word transition, not passed away from um, drug use. And I think this is the time that we really need to start having these conversations. And not only having these conversations, but starting to enact harm reduction tactics in our community, really take them seriously, and also take the responsibility of really um, checking in on our people um, when they're, because this, this, it's just so ironic to me that it, it's we're talking about the men of God, you know, we're talking about spiritually filled people who are where people go for their emotional and their mental stability, coping with repression. Yeah. 
It's a lot Which to is, unpack. It really is. I mean, when you sit there and you dissect all of this in terms of like, you know, you have Catholic priests, obviously, you know, doing things behind closed doors, need, needing uh, mind altering substances to get some sort of an arousal. There, there, there's so there's so much there to unpack. It's like, you know, we really have to start with like, you know, uh, the, uh, the Catholic religion itself in terms of like, you know, maybe we, we're a little stoic. I, I'm seeing this like series on, uh, on Hulu called Grotesquerie. Mm -hmm. And they have this. You've seen that. They, 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 and I've just been watching it. And, you know, they have this priest that, you know, very, very modern thinking, you know, in terms like this. I haven't seen the whole thing yet, but, um, but yeah, I mean, you're starting to see it creep up in, in, you know, in, in entertainment and, you know, maybe that, you know, and you're seeing it in other religions too, that, you know, it's accepting, you know, to, to be a gay priest or whatever it is. So, you know, they have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know if and we... that's what I thought about when I initially heard the story, too, is um, I don't know much about religion. I'm not a religious person, but I've always thought it was odd that priests can't, you know, have sex, get married, whatever. And I worked in gay bars when I was a young little lesbian. And those <laughs> priests were in there all the time picking people up, okay. you know what I mean? Okay. And so they were they were repressed and it was sad and it is sad. And why don't they just let priests be human? Mm -hmm. And I don't know why there's not, it, it, maybe it's something that, you know, the idea is just kind of coming to me now, but I've never seen out there any kind of website or resource for just kind of smart rules for partying. You know, let's let, 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 keep the judgment away from it, because I think anytime you judge, been you, fun. you also, because <laughs> anytime you judge, I think you also push people away from recovery mm -hmm. when they need it because they're in such a place of shame. But, you know, where is the website that tells you that you probably shouldn't do ecstasy after a certain age, that you shouldn't right. mix um, erection medication with poppers and that that can be fatal, that if you are going to do something uh, you know, like a GHB, boy, you better be drinking a ton of water. Like, right. I think we stigmatize the use of it so much that we are not out there just giving people kind of like a friendly nice. guidelines. Like, you know, if you use heroin, use a clean, clean needle, needle. Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. I have a healthy fear to all of this because, you know, I have not experimented with with street drugs so you know i, I i'm very petrified of putting any type of chemical into my own body in mm -hmm. terms of like wondering what it's going to do i have a doctor that's wonderful and and insists that knowing everything i put in my body including multivitamins so it's like you know to add another chemical into my own system it just would not work well i'm so happy you brought that up mark because if you go to impulse <laughs> <laughs> If you go to Impulse Group, if Educate you go to children. our, yes, I can interject this. <laughs> if you go to our, um, our, our, any one of our social medias, there's Impulse Group Miami. There's a chapter in Miami, Orlando, DC, LA. We have a drug chart that tells you what you can and cannot mix, what will be fatal, it, that gives you an entire guideline. It's actually one of our most popular things to give out when we're at... Um, that is phenomenal. Yes, and I have tons of, uh, of, of, of uh, cards, uh, like flyers that I give out, and people are like, oh my God, and on the backside is all the STDs and what you can get, what you can catch, how you can catch it, what the symptoms are, et cetera. And if you do need to get to a place, you can go to AHF, to get yourself checked for um, STDs. Mm -hmm. And um, for, for um, drug use, we also give out Narcan and testing strips. So at our next event, see you at our next event. <laughs> <laughs> you can see me for um, Narcan or testing strips. Um, and actually we'll be reaching out to the community to ha also have this conversation of where y'all would like to have this conversation, you know? Mm -hmm. Like where we would like to have this conversation and, 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 and really get out the word um, or really advocate for, you know, we're not gonna tell you what to do, but do it yeah. safely, harm reduction practices, which is uh, very, very necessary in this day and age. Because people are gonna do what they're gonna do. I knew and I we're liked just it. guessing too. <laughs> we're just guessing. We're just guessing. Right. Mm -hmm.